Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, here to tell you how much I hate religion. Now, this is the reason. There are so many people out there, some, some of you, who are literally tormented, trying so hard to get to know God, so afraid of getting Him upset by anything you might do wrong. Listen to this. I want you to hear a definition. A lot of people, they think of how much they fear God. This is what they feel. They feel terror, fright, horror, panic, dread, dismay, distress, anxiety, worry, 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 uneasiness, apprehension, nervousness, foreboding. I mean, I wouldn't want a God like that. Now listen, this is the word. The Bible, I mean, the dictionary puts it in better context than we do when we say the word fear. The Bible says to fear the Lord, or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But listen, this is the fear the Bible talks of. Um, let me read it. All who fear the Lord stand in awe of, ooh, revere, reverence, respect. You take them seriously. But you're not... <gasps> Did I do that wrong? Did I do that wrong? Oh no, what is he going to do? Oh no, 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 he doesn't. Oh, he's he's going to kick me out. I know he's going to kick me out. I'm not good enough. <laughs> yeah, you're not. But neither am I. The only one good enough is Jesus. And our ticket is Jesus. Not you, not me. So when you think about religion, kick religion to the curb, baby. You do not need it. You need relationship. You get to know God's heart through reading his word. Old and New Testament totally depicts his heart. In the New Testament, that's where we are. But the Old Testament also shows you his characteristics and his power. Now, in the New Testament, when you want to know what God is like? Read everything about Jesus Christ. Well, he said, when you see me, you see him. That's God. Yeah, personified. So, <clears throat> know that God is not a big can of raid ready to knock you out of existence at every wrong turn, every wrong thought, every wrong emotion. No, that's not the God we love and serve. That's a monster that you're thinking about. That's a monster religion creates. When you are a daughter or a son to a good father, a loving father, and God is the best there is, he's the epitome of a parent. Unconditional love goes so beyond anything a human parent can do. And you know, some parents love some monsters just because they happen to be their kids. But God loves us whether we are for him or or against him. Now the blessings and the benefits and all the other stuff goes with with him, being with him, being in line, in sync with him, living a holy, loving life. Okay? But being out of sync has its consequences. Part of the covenant or contract says that certain things are conditional 
This brings about that blessing. That brings about that blessing. But that could bring about some real curses and some situations in your life that you don't want to deal with. Why? Because what that is a list of is everything that is diametrically opposed to who God is. So as long as you're in line with God, you're going to step out of line just because you got two left feet. It means you're a human being. But you don't live out of line. You're not satisfied living out of line. You just... Okay, he stepped out of bounds and get back on, you know, get back on the court and continue playing the game. The game isn't over till God says it's over. So you have no right to quit. Jesus did not quit. He went through the whole ordeal of the cross. And as a result, God blessed him with resurrection, power. God will bless you and me with resurrection power on a daily basis. Every time you think you can't take another day, boom, God will resurrect your spirit, lift you up. He will abundantly pardon. He will encourage. He will strengthen you. He will accompany you. He will give you wisdom. He will lead and guide. But you have to ask. He's not going to force you to do it his way. Now, there are desperate times, take desperate measures, and sometimes God will do some crazy stuff like, you know, uh, Jonah and the whale. He made him, he helped make up his mind for him. But, and sometimes God will let life kick us in the teeth long enough to finally wake up and smell the coffee. But it's not because he's a big can of raid. He's a monster of a pop. He's abusive, and he just wants to make you suffer. No, come on now. If you think that, it's because you have never experienced his love. And on the other hand, you may not even know what good human love is. So don't judge God by your discrepancies and by the fallacies of the people that you've grown up with. Please don't compare him to them. <clears throat> no. He's a whole different ball of wax. Cut religion loose. Get rid of the do's and don'ts. That is the reason. This is what I love about God. He is so... You talk about common sense. <clears throat> God had enough sense to know we can't do this on our own. We will fall on our face every time, no matter how much we think we love him. We'll fall on our face, no matter how much we want to do right. Something stupid, something ugly, something foul is going to come out of us one way or another, at one point or another. But that is the reason God supplied us with his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit has that dunamis power. It's what, where dynamite comes from, the word dynamite, dunamis or dunamis, whatever. But dunamis power is that supernatural ability beyond us, beyond our natural flesh, beyond our natural nature. The Holy Spirit gives us the nature of God, which readjusts our heart, readjusts our thinking, and our conscience and we become sensitive and bothered by things that are sinful things that are opposed to God's ways mm -hmm. things that are not characteristic that are not the fruits of love kindness goodness Yet we get bothered even when we catch ourselves doing it. We're bothered by it. So we immediately say, okay, Lord, please forgive me. Sometimes it's good not to say you're sorry. Because when you sin, yeah, you know you weren't sorry. You know you enjoyed that. So don't even lie to God and say, oh, I'm sorry. Because you're not. Just ask God to forgive you and do your best not to again. 
God is so understanding. He even knows why we have the can't help it. But all I want to say to you is cut religion loose. What you need is a relationship with God, with your Father which art in heaven. You hear me? Yeah. And your liaison, Jesus, oh, he'll always, <laughs> he'll always be there fighting with you, baby. You use his name, I rebuke the desire of lust in the name of Jesus. Ah, I rebuke bitterness in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm telling you, name of Jesus is powerful. God gave us mighty weapons, including his word, prayer, and praise. I'm telling you, he equipped us to live on this dastardly world. God bless you.